This is my patient Nick during his last appointment. I had performed some internal trigger point therapy to the muscles of mastication, and this was his experience when he left my office. It was crazy. So, uh, you did the inside the mouth, the right, pressure right. and the sinus right. thing, and driving, and I, all of us, and I had the week before, mm -hmm. I had just finished this antibiotic uh, cycle for an inner ear infection mm -hmm. from Serpin. And I felt like, oh man, I'm gonna blow my nose, you know, like right after. But it was it was something from way deep down. I had never, I mean, it, you push something and it cleared it. And I haven't, I will never forget that feeling because it was, I pulled over and blew my nose and was like, oh! And it all shot out and I had to, I had, I, all I had was my beach towel. <laughs> And it was, it was dark, dark yellow, you know, like you could tell it was, I, you had forced out all this remnants to where afterward, and I came home and I showed my wife, hey, babe, going around and my two kids are sitting on the couch and what do you do? Cause I felt phenomenally. And I'm like, guys, I'm clear again, man. Yeah, look guys. And they're just like, oh, dad, just, dumb. but it was, it was gnarly. It was, uh, it was a changer for sure. That was good. It was really good. It, I mean, it was awesome. The shin right here, when I'm driving, okay. uh, a lot of pain. And to where, when I, I drove up to Maryland uh, to go skiing, every, I would say almost every two minutes, I'm having to feel like I'm having to stretch my foot this way. And then maybe every 10 minutes, I'll get a good pop and it'll relieve it. Really, but it was almost feeling like this is starting to cramp up. So there's that, this spot where, where I have three screws in here. Okay. And uh, I think I might've mentioned it before, I've been having trouble with this hand a little bit. And this last week since I saw you, but since then it's been to where I can't, I mean, it's like, a, it really hurts. And, but How's then, the wrist thing come up? It's been, this has been bugging me for years and it comes and goes. The last chiropractor guy I went to the one I think I told you about kind of cycles me through real quick. He cycled me, you know, and I never really felt like he was taking much time, like, like you taking time. What Nick is talking about is a high volume based practice. And those types of practices are designed simply to adjust joints. They're not designed to do any assessment, evaluation, muscle function, muscle coordination, trigger point therapy, or massage. This is me in 2007 working at a high volume clinic in Ghana, Africa. Let's see how many practice members or patients I saw that day. Let's go. It's a slow day today. We saw 79 practice members and uh, tomorrow will be a half day where we'll see probably 50. So I've worked in those types of practices and I understand what Nick's talking about. And this is why Nick appreciates the attention to detail. Like you take a time. He said it was out of place. Okay. This is where it was the real pain. I circled the pin here, but the, this is where it, it, it just- Can you bend your wrist? So what is the surgery in your hand? Uh, I broke it from a, from a fight. So, so the fifth metacarpal. But they have three screws and a rod in it? I believe so, yeah. And they have something in your wrist or only the hand? Nothing in the wrist, just the, just the fifth metacarpal. That's okay. it. Okay. So our main things today are fifth metacarpal, left hand, left wrist, right ankle. And then that neck thing, at the, uh, that one that you did, it's just, it's, it's all working so well. So I just need it again. Walk towards me. I want you to try this test. Here I want to check Nick's balance. This is our basic manual muscle testing exam and all the muscles shown in green should be strong or facilitated. Push up for me. So Go starting ahead. off with our basics, the straight leg rectus femoris okay. test is inhibited bilaterally. Push up. Push up. So what we're noticing with Nick on the table is all his muscles are inhibited. Now, Nick's a very powerful individual. His muscles are very strong collectively. But when we're testing each muscle by itself, when it's isolated from other muscle groups, we're noticing that he has a weakness in most of them. Bend this knee. 
Delaney pull. Good head left for me. Delaney pull. Oh, what the hell? You want to try that again? Yeah. Go. Oh, jeez. So what's happening here is initially his hip flexors are strong until we turn his head left. Oh. So Nick is kind of confused, like, what the hell? What happened? Yeah. So I asked him if he wants to try again. It's same result. Try this one. Head right for me. Actually, head straight first. Nick. Delaney pull. Head right. Go. Okay, so it's a right sided issue. Right ankle. Try this. Nick, push away from me. Push towards the door. Yep. Push towards your hip. Go. Try this one. Arms straight. Push towards your hip. Rock solid. Push towards me. Now, after all of that, these are Nick's results. We have inhibition of most of his major muscle groups except the left pectoralis major and the left latissimus dorsi. The next exam is a tuning fork exam and it measures vibration. Vibration is carried up through these nerves and they change sides in the medulla before going up to the thalamus and into the brain. So technically what we're measuring is how the brain is perceiving vibration. Nick, how does this vibration feel? compared to this vibration? Uh, same. Let's give it a number. If this is a 10, is this also a 10, more than a 10, less than a 10? Yes. Both 10s? Yes. That's a 10. What's this? Eight. Okay. If this is a 10, what's this? Nine. Ten. Ten. Okay. This is the optokinetic tape, and what it does is it generates eye movements. And the way it does that, as a person looks from red to red, their eyes jump. And what it's designed to do is to replicate head movement. So here, for example, when you look from red to red, you'll feel your eyes jumping, and that's what I'm doing with Nick. And then I'll want to go back and recheck his muscle functions and see if there's any change. And there is not. So let's recap that. We did our initial manual muscle test. We did some type of therapy. In this case, we did the optokinetic tape. Then we went back and redid muscle testing, and it made no impact. We're not going to apply that direction to Nick's case. Now, this down to the right is incorrect for Nick. He doesn't need this. However, I want to see how close he was to threshold and what would happen if his head had moved in this other direction. What you'll notice is not only is it difficult for him to follow, visually it also gives him a headache you can feel that right here which is a good reminder for us practitioners out there that when our patients are in the car or traveling in a train if they're having some type of disturbance like this they can get headaches and sick from looking out the window jumping from object to object so these are the eight positions that a person can look into up and to the right, up, up and to the left, left, down and to the left, down, down and to the right, and right. So with Nick, we first tried to the left. I wanted to temporarily see what down and to the right would do. It did not do well for him. And then we went down and to the left, and we'll see what impact that has upon his muscle function. What we notice with this is he has an easy time tracking. It doesn't give him a headache. It's mimicking the right posterior canal. So when you turn your head back into the right, you look down into the left. So that's what we're mimicking with this optokinetic tape. Now, when I go back and recheck Nick, all his reflexes are strong. And this is what I want to start from in this position where my patient's muscles are strong, they're all working. Now I'll go look for subluxations, muscle injuries, tonic neck reflexes that are out, but this is my baseline. So once again, let's recap. We're going to do some type of test. It could be a balance test, manual muscle test. It could be finger to nose, some type of measurement. Then we're going to apply our therapy. In this case, we did our optokinetics down and to the left. Then we went back and checked all of Nick's muscles. They all facilitated. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take his head and rotate it so that that right posterior canal is in line with gravity. I'm going to twist his head, and then I'm going to throw him, similar to an Epley's maneuver, to stimulate the fluid in his ear to get it to spin. So this is a video demonstrating the fluid in the inner ear and what happens when you move the head, how the fluid in the ear or these canals spin. So I'm attempting to move 
the fluid in one canal. One more time. When I spin that fluid, the goal is to get the canals to fire up, and when they fire up, they fire into these things called the vestibular nuclei. And from there, those fire to control eyes, they send signals into the cerebellum, which controls movement and muscle coordination. So this is why we're seeing Nick's muscles facilitate and turn on again. Once again, this is where I like to start at a baseline before I start examining patients for all their other issues. Here, this is the outcome of that. We went back and rechecked his muscle groups. All of his muscles that were inhibited became facilitated except that right latissimus dorsi muscle. Turn your head left for me. Bend this knee, don't let me pull. Here we see the right hip flexors fire up after that treatment. Try right again, go. Okay, try this one again, Nick. Okay, here's both. Let's do it again. Ready, turn towards me. I want you to relax your head and give me the lead. Ready? Go. There we go. Let's try this one again. You ready? Arms straight. Don't let me pull. Hey. How was that? So after that second time that we did that right posterior canal stimulation, it fired up all his muscles. I was not expecting that right latissimus dorsi to fire up like it did. Sorry, brother. I can line up. No, that's that's you've got to do what you got to do. That's. <laughs> Let's try something. I'm gonna let Nick introduce Harriet Tubman. You know, Harriet Tubman had brain surgery when she was in her 80s without anesthesia. I did not know this. You know, she had, she was known for having seizures when she was smuggling slaves and they were under strict orders to just let her have the seizure, let her rest and then move on. So at the end of the war, she finally agreed to get a surgery done to relieve the pressure. She refused anesthesia because she had said she had seen so many Union soldiers suffer amputations without it that she refused it and she went through the entire surgery without it. That's impressive. Yeah, man, that's what I think of whenever I feel like a little... Well, she probably bit on something, though. Probably. So we're going to try that for you. And we're going to see if it changes the sensation in your foot. So let me explain this here. With Nick's TMJ, which is not gapped, I want to know if we gap his TMJ, will it diminish his pain, which is an indication that he might be having some type of TMJ dysfunction, which is common for him. Remember, he does mixed martial arts, so men are always jamming his jaw joint back up into its socket. So I'm going to do a test. In this case, it was the tenderness on the bottom of his foot. We're going to insert the tongue depressors, and then we're going to go back and recheck the tenderness of his foot. We're gonna segue for a moment and let Dr. Vincent Clark explain something real briefly. We just gave him a stack of tongue depressors to bite down on, and this was literally the first time he walked for a month. It seemed incredible, but it turns out that I think there's a, there's a, a benefit to this that's been completely overlooked by modern medicine. Now, it's very old. You remember a long time ago, before anesthesia, they would give people something to bite on when they did surgery. The assumption was that so you didn't bite down so hard that you break your teeth, it turns out there's a brain effect of biting separate from any of that. It causes analgesia and it can correct a lot of symptoms of motor syndromes that are currently really untreatable by modern medicine. Any different? Feels like a, a tightness towards the ball or the heel right in there. But it's less painful with that in. Yeah. Now, how do I know, how are we going to assess this foot being different? Is it when you drive? When, when I drive, when I kick the foot in the stirrup, that's when it was really hurt. Nick's complaining about this ankle issue, but it's oh, probably more likely the muscles to control the ankle. So here I'm gonna do a lot of applied force 
into some of his leg muscles. And I'm frequently going to look up to check in on Nick's facial expressions because if it's too much pain for him, I'll lighten up. We always need to engage with our patients, check in on what they're doing, what their capacity is. What is that thing doing that? Well, this is your tibialis anterior. And there's a high probability you've never had it treated. Oh, that was awesome. Oh, yeah. uh, one of the things that patients do appreciate is the quality of time that we spend with them. And it allows us to go through their system, find all the little things that are wrong, correct them. And when new things pop up, either in that visit or the next visit, to spend time on those issues. So let's see what this treatment does for Nick and what the outcome is. All right, we're not done. Yes, sir. But go walk. And let's still see how that foot makes it feels. Yes, sir. Uh. This is part one of Nick's case. At the end, you can click to see part two. We'll get more into his wrist and some of the other issues that he's suffering from. How's that feel? Way better. That's a huge Tell me about this left wrist. How does it hurt? How does it show up as being painful? Do something? Is it a movement? Is it a what? Started when I was trying to pick up the goat. And <laughs> I love this. What? I love your goat stories, man. It's T-Stress Chiropractic and Dr. Algy would like to publicly thank Nick for approving this video and his trust in our services. With a special thanks to chiropractic consultants, Dr. Michael Allen and Dr. Chris D. Martini. If you're looking for two great chiropractic neurologists, these are some great professionals to go to.